Well, hello again, everyone. I want to share with you uh, a little mixture of personal life experience and uh, a wonderful treasure from God's Word today. You know, we all have treasures in life. It doesn't matter who we are, where we are, or regardless of our circumstances, we all have those things in our lives which we consider to be a treasure. As a child, one of the treasures that I had in my life, which still holds strong memories, is I used to really treasure my grandfather, Douglas Forlong. Now, Douglas Forlong was a farming man most of his life. And in his latter years, in what he would have pretended to be retirement, he actually became a taxidermist. So I, as a child, had many strong memories of visiting his house and it was a, a great intrigue to go down the stairs into his basement workshop and to explore all the animals that he had stuffed. It was fascinating. Birds, all sorts of creepy crawly animals, possums, but my favourite as a child was an entire 12-pointer stag that he had mounted in standing position on a wooden framework on wheels. And back in those days, the city of Taranga used to have a Christmas parade. And my grandfather would pull out his old single-cylinder villius engine and he would rig it up through a drive belt and some wheels and he set up what looked like Santa Claus sleigh with the stag pulling a sleigh that was being driven by this old bang, 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 bang engine and my grandfather in it dressed as Santa Claus. Now you can imagine that parade would go past the houses and, and we would stand there and I would say, that's my grandfather and it was really exciting and those are memories that just burn into my, burnt into my memory as real treasures. My grandfather would be the first to tell you there were things in his life that he held very precious and, and dear. And he did some memorable things for God in his lifetime. And he had a lot of treasures. However, I want to share with you today one of the greatest treasures he ever had. And it's here. It was my grandfather's Bible. And you know, you can see by the condition of it, where my grandfather's affections really lay in life. You can see he spent much time, many hours in God's Word. And that's why the pages are falling out. The pages have been worn so thin and they've gone yellow and they've torn because of the repetitive periods of time of reading and turning pages and writing notes, etc. And I consider this to now be one of my great treasures in life. This Bible was printed in 1964, two years after I was born. And it was my grandfather's treasure. However, the God of the Bible was my grandfather's greatest treasure. And I can tell you in my life, the God of the Bible is also my greatest treasure. There is no treasure in life. There is no relationship in life. And I have some wonderful relationships with people, and particularly my wife. But none of those wonderful treasures in life compares to the treasure of knowing God through the Lord Jesus Christ. However, I wanted to share with you just two little verses out of my grandfather's Bible, because you, as you look at it, you'll see that there is a particular section of the Bible which is worn through even more than other sections. And it's the letter that Paul wrote to the church in Thessalonica, the first letter, 1 Thessalonians, and in particular, chapter 4. And for some of us, you, you'll know where I'm heading. Chapter 4, and I'm going to read two verses, verse 16 and 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, 
and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall be forever with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Many of us love this passage as my grandfather loved this passage. I love this passage because it tells me so much about God and about Jesus Christ. It tells me that the next great fixed event on God's calendar is when God the Father will dispatch His Son from heaven to come to earth to snatch up His bride, the church. It tells me that God loves His church so much that He is going to send none other. He's not going to give this responsibility to angels. He's not going to entrust this responsibility to even the church. He's going to dispatch His very own Son to come and snatch us up. Now, those of us that know theology know that in the, the Greek word there used for snatching up, we've, we have translated into the English language as rapture. And it makes no difference, my friend, what you think of eschatology. It makes no difference what you think of the rapture or not. It makes no difference what you think of God or not. This event is a certainty waiting to happen. We can't change the certainty of this. But we can live in expectation and in surrendered living to Jesus Christ as we await for this event to happen. My grandfather, particularly towards the latter stages of his life before he moved to heaven we would sit and we would talk I, I was just a boy in my early teenage years and he suffered some very unpleasant medical conditions towards the end of his life here on earth and he would be just so enthralled with being able to sit and talk with his little grandson, and he had a, quite a few grandchildren, but he better sit with me and to explain the certainty and the joy, the expectation of this great event that God has predetermined. And so I want to invite you, along with in exhorting myself, to live a life of readiness for the return of Jesus Christ to live a life of expectation for the return of Jesus Christ. And as you are listening to this, you think in yourself, but Lincoln, I don't believe that. Then today's the day to choose to believe that. God's word states it as a certainty. It's not negotiable. It's not something that God is going to say, well, look, if I can get enough people on board with me, then maybe I'll do this. No. No, not at all. This is an absolutely stamped event in the mind of God and in the predetermined will of God. My friend, as, as, as you're listening to this, if you know you're not ready, if you know that deep down inside, one of the treasures of your heart is hanging on to this worldly life that we have, I suggest that it's time for you to reevaluate and discriminate your priorities in favor of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I invite you to make Jesus Christ a treasure, the prime treasure, the ultimate treasure of your heart. Pick up God's Word. Feed yourself on the wonderful truths found in God's Word. Give your heart's affections to the treasure of the infinite treasure of knowing Jesus Christ and having Him as your Saviour, having Him as your Redeemer, having Him as your security for eternal life in heaven in His presence. Spend much time in God's Word. Meditate upon it. Think through it. Pray over it. Pray about how the truths of God's Word do or do not impact your life and do that with great humility. Do it with great surrenderedness, 
with faith calling upon God to impress his values, his truths, his timetable, his plans, his will, his values, to impress all those things into your mind, into your heart, into your spirit, so that his desires become your desires. So that the things that he holds precious becomes the things that you hold precious. And so that the things that he treasures will be the things that you treasure. It is a, a great joy to grow over the years in your Christian walk, increasing your appreciation of the things that God holds as precious. And certainly, as we read Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, he held the return of Jesus Christ as absolutely precious. It was prime. And so be encouraged. Make Jesus Christ your treasure. If you're a Christian and you're finding life pretty tough going, and we go through those times, if the schemes of the devil are working against you at present and, at present and God has permitted that to happen, then come and recognize that in Jesus Christ, God has given you the spiritual armor that you need to be able to stand firm. And the first piece of that armor, Ephesians 6, tells us is to put on the belt of truth. And the belt of truth, as Jesus said, your word, O Lord, in John 17, 17, your word is truth. Beloved, don't think that you can live a, a victorious, steadfast, joyful Christian life that is honoring to God unless your life is saturated with the absolute truths of God's word. There is no way of circumventing this reality. To be a child of God is to be someone immersed in the truth of God's word. Put on the armor of God. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Put on the, the shield of faith, rather take up the shield of faith. Put on the shoes of being ready to serve God. Turn indecision into decision because you are ready to make the treasures of God your treasures and you are ready and prepared and what's more, you are willing to do what God wants in your life for his glory and to bring him pleasure. And I can assure you, when God gets the glory, we have the blessing of peace and joy in our lives.